Greetings, I'm Dr. David Gersten. Today I'm going to talk about depression and amino acid therapy. At least 41 million Americans are taking an SSRI antidepressant. Many of them are also taking a second antidepressant. SSRIs, which stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, tend to provide short-term benefit along with a long-term deficiency in the neurotransmitter serotonin. It's easy for doctors to make a decision to prescribe an SSRI, but it's often very difficult to get people off an SSRI. Depression is so common that everyone is either depressed or knows someone who is. Here are the criteria used for diagnosing depression according to the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. According to the DSM, a major depressive episode involves significant impairment in work, social, and romantic relationships. A diagnosis of depression also requires at least five of the following nine items. One, depressed mood. Two, loss of pleasure or interest. Three, significant change in appetite or weight. Four, insomnia or hypersomnia. Psychomotor retardation, which means slow speech and slow movement. Six, fatigue. Seven, feelings of worthlessness or guilt. Eight, decreased ability to think or concentrate. And nine, recurrent thoughts of death, including suicidal thoughts. There are many conditions that sound like depression, but aren't. They include hypothyroidism, chronic fatigue syndrome, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, chronic stress, grief, chronic viruses, digestive disorders, hypoglycemia, inflammation, substance abuse and alcoholism, dark night of the soul, and a teenager's identity crisis. A psychiatrist needs to rule out any of these 12 conditions before making a diagnosis of clinical depression. Depression is complex. In a 15 to 30 minute psychiatric evaluation, it's impossible to examine everything in your life that relates to how you feel. But in order to ultimately reach a simple understanding, we first have to be okay with embracing high levels of complexity. If we don't do that, the 15 minute evaluation that ends with your Paxil prescription is like pulling two of these red ropes, hoping to disentangle and understand the whole thing. Now, let's take a look at a neuron synapse. The synapse is a small space between two neurons. Information in the form of neurotransmitters flows from one neuron across the synaptic space to another neuron. A presynaptic ending of the sending neuron contains neurotransmitters, which are the small circles in this graphic, that travel into the synapse and then make contact with receptor sites on the postsynaptic ending of the receiving neuron. Once a postsynaptic receptor is activated, the chemical information moves into the receiving neuron where the chemical signal becomes an electrical signal. There are three main neurotransmitters involved in depression, namely serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. I'm trying something new with this video today. I'm going to share pictures and images that metaphorically convey the feelings and functions of each neurotransmitter rather than giving you a long laundry list of items. I'm using an image of the Dalai Lama as a symbol of what a healthy level of serotonin looks like. So a healthy level of serotonin is associated with serenity, safety, security, and self-confidence. A person who is deficient in serotonin may feel the opposite of our serotonin man, the Dalai Lama. So they may feel depressed, struggle with insomnia, and crave carbohydrates. The neurotransmitter dopamine is about reward and pleasure. It motivates us to move toward what we require for survival, which is food, water, and sex, and to move away from danger. You also see chocolate at the top of this graphic, and you're wondering, what does that have to do with dopamine? Well, chocolate works at the dopamine receptor site. Sexual orgasm also works at the dopamine receptor site. If dopamine could speak, it would say, I want it now. Dopamine is complicated, as you'll see in the second graphic with our rocket man. Dopamine's about reward and pleasure 
It's also about motivation, movement, enthusiasm, seeking short-term exciting goals, and sometimes moving towards risky activities like our rocket man is doing right now. A person deficient in dopamine, who is the opposite of our rocket man, may be depressed, unable to feel pleasure, lacks a clear sense of goals, is unable to handle stress very well, he feels apathetic and fatigued. The neurotransmitter norepinephrine helps with focus, memory, concentration, decision-making, and a host of other cognitive functions. Norepinephrine keeps us energized. Our chess player, who has healthy levels of norepinephrine, is patient, able to think ahead, and is not in a hurry to get a quick reward. Norepinephrine is about maintaining complex cognitive functions in a stable way for a long time, or at least a longer time than the reward that dopamine is after. A person deficient in norepinephrine, who is the opposite of our chess player, can be depressed, have insomnia, impaired memory, poor concentration, and a host of other cognitive problems. Dopamine and norepinephrine work together. Dopamine, which is involved in reward and motivation, is involved in pushing us to move quickly to attain goals for survival, like food, water, and sex, as well as non-essential goals. Metaphorically, dopamine says, I'm impatient. I want the goal now, and is right in front of me, ready for me to grab it. Norepinephrine, which is made from dopamine, says, let's slow it down a bit. I'm attracted to what you want. I like it. But if we slow it down, I can think about it, analyze it, see if your goal makes sense, or I may conclude that there is a better goal. But the better goal will take somewhat longer to reach. Both dopamine and norepinephrine are energizing, and both are involved in fight or flight biochemistry. So if they don't stay in balance, they can push us into a stress response. These metaphorical graphics of serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine should help give you a visual feel for the quality of depression associated with each of these three neurotransmitters, as well as how each neurotransmitter functions. Now, let's summarize what we've covered so far. A person who is depressed due to deficient dopamine may feel apathetic, unable to feel pleasure, and lacks motivation. A person who is depressed due to deficient norepinephrine may have impaired memory, poor focus, poor concentration. A person who is depressed due to deficient serotonin may have carbohydrate cravings, doesn't feel safe and secure in the world, and may be anxious. All three types of depression can cause insomnia. Now, let's look at the biochemical pathways, starting with serotonin. I'm going to make this real simple, even though we're looking at a complete map of serotonin biochemistry. In a future video, I'll discuss the complex biochemical processes involved with depression in detail. In this graphic, amino acids and neurotransmitters are printed blue. The enzymes that convert one step to the next are in green, and the nutritional cofactors that the enzymes require are in black. The amino acid L-tryptophan enters the brain where it's converted to 5-HTP, which is 5-hydroxytryptophan. 5-HTP then converts into serotonin. To get from point A to point B in biochemistry, an enzyme is always required. Each enzyme has its unique requirements of nutrient cofactors in order for the enzyme to work. The main nutrient cofactors in serotonin chemistry are magnesium, vitamin C, SAMI, which is S-adenosylmethionine, vitamin B12, and P5P, which stands for pyridoxal 5-phosphate. P5P is the active form of vitamin B6, and it's the most important cofactor for the production of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Now, I've been asked before, can't I just eat really a lot of turkey in order to get the L-tryptophan and the serotonin that I need? You can boost serotonin by eating a lot of turkey or by taking a few capsules of the amino acid L-tryptophan. The catecholamine neurotransmitters include dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. 
They're involved in fight or flight biochemistry in addition to the specific qualities we've already discussed. This biochemistry starts with the amino acid phenylalanine, which turns into L-tyrosine in the liver. L-tyrosine then enters the brain, gets converted into L-dopa, which gets converted into dopamine. Dopamine is then converted into norepinephrine, and norepinephrine is converted into epinephrine. The main nutrient cofactors required for this chemistry are P5P, vitamin C, copper, and a form of folic acid called tetrahydrofolic acid. The two lab tests I use most often to determine the levels of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine are amino acid analysis and urine organic acids. The main amino acids involved in brain chemistry are phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, glutamine, taurine, and GABA. A urine organic acid test measures breakdown products of biochemistry. While there are usually about 45 subtests, we're interested right now in the organic acids related to neurotransmitters. HVA is the breakdown product of dopamine. VMA and MHPG are the breakdown products of norepinephrine. A third test I frequently order measures platelet levels of neurotransmitters in a blood sample. From this test, I can get a really accurate reading of 10 different neurotransmitters. Now, let's suppose that your dopamine is too high based on elevated HVA in your urine organic acid test, and your norepinephrine is too low based on low levels of VMA and MHPG, as well as deficient tyrosine and perhaps phenylalanine in your amino acid test. If your dopamine is a little bit too high, you may experience fear for no reason. If your norepinephrine is too low, you may feel depressed and have cognitive problems like impaired memory and impaired concentration. Now, we can actually use this graphic here to figure out how to fix this problem. The enzyme that converts dopamine to norepinephrine requires copper and vitamin C. It also requires iron, but copper and vitamin C are the most important. By simply providing those two nutrients, copper and vitamin C, that enzyme, which is dopamine beta hydroxylase, that enzyme gets activated, which means dopamine is now going to convert faster into norepinephrine. So dopamine is going to drop, norepinephrine is going to go up. So when your dopamine drops back into a normal range, this fear for no reason, or worry also, that fear is going to drop, and the memory and concentration issues are going to go away, and they're going to improve. So in this situation, you can look at this map and see a really easy solution to balance dopamine and norepinephrine. What I'm describing is the foundation of scientific psychiatry, which is based on lab work, not guesswork. Now, let's put together the different aspects of depression covered in this video. We'll take a quick look at the images and pictures that convey how dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin affect mood, as well as the lab data. Let's start with our serotonin graphic and the Dalai Lama. Serotonin is involved in security, safety, serenity, and self-confidence. You're probably deficient in serotonin if your experience of life is the opposite of this picture and you crave carbohydrates. If your amino acid test shows that you are deficient in tryptophan, the precursor to serotonin, it's a safe bet that you are depressed due to a deficiency of serotonin. Moving on to norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is involved in memory, concentration, decision-making, and helps you think ahead to obtain the best reward. If you're the opposite of this chess player, you're likely to be depressed and have impaired memory and poor concentration. Your amino acid test shows that you are deficient in tyrosine and possibly phenylalanine. Your urine organic acid test that shows you are deficient in VMA and MHPG, the breakdown products of norepinephrine. If you're depressed, it's due to deficient norepinephrine. Dopamine has many functions, including striving for survival, which is about food, water, and sex or reproduction. It's about finding the pleasure and rewards. If you're depressed, can't find pleasure in life, 
are fatigued, and basically your life is the opposite of this picture, you may be deficient in dopamine. Dopamine is about motivation, movement, and short-term goals. Dopamine motivates people to strive for their goals and their survival needs. Dopamine is also about movement. If you are depressed, can't get motivated, and your movement and speech are slower than usual, you may be deficient in dopamine, especially if you don't experience pleasure or seek rewards. Your amino acid test shows that you are deficient in tyrosine and possibly phenylalanine. Your urine organic acid test shows that you are deficient in HVA. If you are depressed, it's probably caused by a deficiency in dopamine. Now, let's look at some pretty easy natural ways that you can beat depression. Here are some basic recommendations that will help a depressed person recover using the natural nutrients that turn into neurotransmitters in our brains. Number one, if you're depressed due to deficient dopamine or norepinephrine, try taking the amino acid L-tyrosine starting at 500 milligrams a day and increasing to 2,000 milligrams a day if you need to. If you have a thyroid problem, especially hyperthyroid, check with the doctor before taking L-tyrosine, since tyrosine not only makes norepinephrine, it also makes thyroxine. Second, if you're depressed due to deficient serotonin, you may want to take L-tryptophan starting at 500 milligrams a day and increasing to 2,000 milligrams a day as needed. If for some reason you don't get enough of the mood lift that you need, you can take 5-HTP as a second strategy. Third, take a multivitamin and multimineral in order to provide the cofactors that activate the enzymes that convert one step to the next to the next. Four, paradoxal 5-phosphate, or P5P, is required to activate the enzymes in all of your neurotransmitter chemistry. Take 25 to 50 milligrams twice a day. Five, take tyrosine and tryptophan away from meals, away from each other, and away from the amino acids phenylalanine, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These six amino acids compete with each other at the blood-brain barrier. Six, exercise. It is a powerful antidepressant. Seven, thoughts help determine emotion. Emotion helps create our biochemistry. You can change your thoughts from negative to positive. Through meditation, you can quiet down your thoughts. Practice gratitude. It's easy to do and will help improve your mood. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the biochemistry of depression. Please subscribe and like this video if you liked it or learned something from it. For a detailed understanding of amino acid therapy, check out my first video here called Amino Acid Therapy Overview for Depression and Chronic Fatigue. Stay tuned as I explore the many facets of depression. Have a great day.